Part of the power of Cab Rider is the fact that it's built on SketchUp. So even if there's something that we don't draw for you, uh, it's pretty easy to make modifications to parts that are existing or even add new parts to your model um, because you can just use any standard SketchUp tools that you want. So the only complication is if you've watched any of the videos on extended entity info, uh, let's pull that up here real quick. You'll notice that there's things that are assigned to each of these parts. Uh, what the material type is, uh, the name of the material. If uh, it's a box, then it needs a component type. And if there's any resizing and so on and so forth, part numbers, subassembly, and, and all that good stuff. However, when you draw a part that doesn't already exist after Cab Rider has done the drawing, that information is not in the extended entity window. So we've provided a tool that will allow you to put that information onto a part so that it becomes a standard Cab Rider part. The advantage of that is that it knows all that information so it can add it to the cut list for you. Otherwise, um, you'd draw the part, it would be there, and it would look good, but it wouldn't get onto your cut list. Or to the CNC if, if you exported it via DXF. So let me show you how this works. If we had drawn this cabinet here, and you'll notice that it didn't draw a filler panel for me here, and I wanted to add a filler panel, I could do so. So I can just pick the standard uh, rectangle tool here in SketchUp, and I could go over here and I could draw myself a rectangle, hit P for the push-pull tool, and pull it out so it's even with the face frame. Triple click on it, right click and say make component. And let's just call this uh, filler panel. All right, so now I've got myself a filler panel, but if we open up the extended entity info window, there's nothing, there's nothing there. So I'm just going to finish uh, drawing this. Uh, I'm going to triple click on it and hit the P for push pull again. I'm going to drag it down there. And I also want a bit of a scribe on here. So I'm going to add three quarters of an inch. All right, so there's my completed part. And <clears throat> again, there is no extended entity info. Uh, I can go in and add that manually, but in order to make sure that this part gets uh, numbered correctly, we should use the Cab Rider tool to do so. If I look in just my plain old entity info box here, it puts it on layer zero when it's first made. Unlike, um, say, this part, for example, this part uh, has got a definition that corresponds to the cabinet number that has been assigned when it was drawn, and it's got an instance name and so on and it's on the proper layer. So we need to get all that correct as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on this part and we're going to hit this um, icon over here called Rename Component. And we should be able to find that under Tab Writer. Oh, sorry, under uh, Edit, Tab Writer, Rename Component. Um, you can get it here as well. So first, what we need to know is uh, what cabinet number we're going to assign this to. And it's C3U for upper. So when I go back here, um, we're going to fill in the cabinet number. And that is C3U. And the component type is a, uh, we're going to assign it to a box. And, uh, I think that was box number one. That was something I should have checked. And the instance name, we're going to call this, this is, uh, if I was looking at this from the front, it would be the right filler panel. So the, uh, the definition name is the definition of that part. The instance name is um, the particular instance of that part, because you could have multiple uh, instances of the same component. In fact, I could 
uh, in a minute I'll take this and copy it over to the other side and we'll call that the left filler panel. Now uh, we could protect this part. Um, there's a separate video on that. In this case, um, it may or may not be necessary to protect it, but it won't hurt anything. Uh, that way, uh, Cab Writer won't touch this part and won't delete it and won't do anything to it if, um, if it gets redrawn. So that's all I need to do. And I'm going to hit OK. Now if I look at this part, it's got all this information filled in. It's still on layer zero, so I should add this to the upper boxes layer. And uh, if I look at the extended entity info, I have to go and add, uh, the subassembly has been added for me because uh, it knows uh, the subassembly, but it doesn't know anything else about that part. It can't really know anything else about that part, so I'm going to have to add this information manually. So uh, it's sheet good, and we're going to call this maple plywood, and um, do I want to oversize this or anything? Um, I could maybe, if I wanted to, oversize the width by a quarter of an inch, uh, whatever I need to do. And later, when we renumber the cabinets, uh, the component number will get filled in. So if I did a, a renumber cabinets right now, that gives part numbers to everything. Um, and then I open up the extended entity info window again. Now I've got a uh, part number to go along with that. Again, if I were to want to copy this over, um, I would use the move command. I just hit M and uh, pull this up over here. I want, and I uh, hit the option key on the Mac, do a move, line it up right there. Uh, but the only thing I got to do now manually is this instant name is, is right filler panel. If I look up here, this instance name is also right filler panel, but I want to change this to left. Left filler panel. Notice, um, notice the uh, extended entity info disappeared, unfortunately. So um, that's a SketchUp issue. That when you copy an instance and or copy a component and change its instance name, it kills any of this information. Sorry, I misspoke. If you, that's only if you change the, the, the component name. If you change the instance name, it's okay. But um, you'll see that oops, uh, they both have the same component number at this point. And I, if I go and uh, tab writer, remember all cabinets again. It still stays the same. That's because they are identical size, so they're going to show up on the parts list as a quantity two of this particular part. So that's all there is to making a new part that Cab Writer hasn't drawn. You just got to make sure to uh, rename that if you want it to uh, show up on your parts list. Uh, but if you had a part that already existed, and you didn't like the way it was, let's say I needed this part and I'm going to unlock it, right click on it and unlock it. Let's say I wanted that to be wider and have an arch in it or something. So if I pull it down, say uh, three inches and uh, let's say we want to just put a bit of an uh, arc in here. I just went and triple clicked it and put it in. Um, edit component mode and putting a, a little bit of an arch on there. And then I hit P for push and push that back. Now I've got a little arch on there. Problem is, the next time Cab Writer redraws this cabinet, it's going to blow that away. 
So the only thing I want to do is open the extended entity info window again. Notice all the information is still there on that part because Cabrider drew that originally and put that all in. The only thing I want to do is protect it now. So if I were to redraw this cabinet, uh, that part would stay as it is. So there's a lot you can do with the standard SketchUp tools um, as long as you understand the rules and how to make sure that uh, Cabrider knows about these parts so that they don't either get blown away or don't end up on your cut list. So enjoy yourself, um, add as much as you want to your drawing, uh, modify as much as you want, and make sure you follow the rules. Thanks.